Hi, Kelly. How are you? You're muted, Kelly. You're <laughs> muted. How are you doing? <laughs> very good. Very good. My name is Bob Heinrich. I'm from uh, Stockton University here in Southern New Jersey. How is how is Southern New Jersey doing? <laughs> uh, we're doing okay. You know, we're trying our best to you know get used to the new norm. Uh, yes. So you're in Maine. I am in Maine. Yes. So I am. We're up in Maine. We're in Castine. So we're about an hour south of Acadia National Park. Got it. But once upon a time, I was at Montclair State. Oh, nice. Um, and actually, I did my first few years at Rutgers, Newark. So I'm from Brooklyn, New York originally. So. <laughs> Got it. Okay. I think. So I think that, uh, you know, this is the first session that I've facilitated. So I'm, do you have slides to share? Yes, we do. You do, okay. Uh, do you want to test making sure that, uh, that you can do a screen share? Kelly, if it helps, I also did download the slides beforehand. So if it, it's not just on Google Slides itself. So whichever it, uh, you think is better. Whatever you want, Amira. <laughs> Wait, let me put it. Okay. So let's try. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Carl. Okay. Maritime Academy. Hey, bugged. So, Carlos, I got a quick question. I had my screen shared as the facilitator just at the very beginning, but I, I don't need that anymore because now the presenter will just share their, their own screen, correct? Uh, yeah, with the exception of, um, so there, I, I think uh, Strive has kind of, which is, is optional really, it's not really a big deal in terms of the housekeeping and whatnot that they ask you to provide. Uh -huh. um, but that doesn't necessarily have to be up on the slides. As long as the information is conveyed once the room is open, then it's totally fine. It makes it, I think it makes it an easier transition anyway that way. Got it, okay. Does this screen look normal to everyone? Uh, you're not in slideshow mode? So it's it's if you go into slideshow mode, that would should open it up full screen, and that is the uh, the preview. You probably just have to change change your share so it's it's on your monitor that you see the full slide. Mm, hold on. There you go. That was it. Yeah, yep, you had yeah. it. <laughs> Didn't look like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever it was, that was it. So this. Yes. Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay, I guess. <laughs> so Amira, do you do you want to just drive and and push the slide so we're not just changing it? Yeah, so if you want, I can like start clicking through them if that works. Yeah, we can just give a um just when there's a long pause or like a, you know, go to the next slide, whatever can kind of indicate when it's time to jump to the next one. Okay, yeah, so I could do that, definitely. All right, so before we have any attendees jump in, I just want to let you know that we are live uh, and um, we have a hard stop of 45 minutes. So I'll uh, let you know when we get to that point at about 3.45. Sounds good. Um, I, I'm not sure if we talked about this in advance, um, but to kick it off, I th we can just, you know, welcome to the session and a, a brief, like, you know, name and title in your institution for that first slide. Um, I don't mind doing, I don't mind starting that if that's cool with everyone. Yeah, that works for me. Okay. So we're going. And for the record, I, I am uh, in here as your Q&A facilitator, so that way you all don't need to worry about that. You can, you know, focus on the presentation itself, and then I will answer whatever questions I can uh, that come through the Q&A, if I can answer them, uh, you know, by, by typing out an answer. Um, but anything that may be more general or 
non-SUNY Maritime specific, uh, then I will just pose uh, at the end, you know, once the presentation's over so that you can answer them live. Do we know how many people we have or students we have registered or? Last I checked, it was five. It was uh, seven. I just checked like <laughs> within the last hour. There's a lot of people register last minute on like, I think everything virtual. Yeah. So that's why I've started taking on just checking like right before it happens. I did one last night. It was for a whopping seven. I'm send an email to admissions, like just a general email. Okay. Cause like I'm in a thing now and then Okay. Just, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to make fancy signs for our office that say <laughs> in virtual session in so that people don't do not do that <laughs> when we're all in. That's, that's what my 11-year-old did for her, her door this spring so that my husband didn't walk in. <laughs> Just a quick question. I'm doing the the industry slide and then the which other one I can't remember um, then you're starting programs and activities okay got it okay and then your slides okay just double checking because I was going to check now but it's kind of occupied right now I wrote it down <laughs> This is the worst part. <laughs> For our like campus virtual session, like a lot of the virtual stuff we do, we send the link to students like 10 minutes in advance and then give them the 10 minutes to join and get settled. Um, but keep meaning to, like I forget in between, but I keep meaning to test like that we have a video play or music or something because it does make for like a long awkward 10 minutes where you just like stare at them <laughs> while they join. All right, so folks, just once again, we are live. We do have one uh, attendee who is now logged in. So we'll get started uh, in a, it's 2.59. We'll get started in a couple minutes here. Are we good to go? Yeah, I mean, we since we do have seven, we want to wait maybe two more minutes just in case we only have one that's logged in. Okay. We'll just give them one more minute. Yeah.
All right, well, since the session is going to be recorded, uh, why don't we get started? And um, we had a screen share up, but the screen share um, stopped. So I don't know if, if we, was it? Uh, yeah, because you have to share that slide for the, for the students, just to remind them that the session is recorded. Yes, thank you. Let me bring that back up so I have it. All right. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Bob Heinrich. I am the Chief Enrollment Management Officer at Stockton University. Uh, I want to welcome uh, uh, our uh, partners as well as those who are logged in uh, this afternoon uh, for this uh, session. Uh, a couple of quick housekeeping tips regarding the Zoom uh, webinar. Uh, you can uh, ask questions through the Q&A by typing them in at any time uh, and we'll be answering them uh, live as, as we go. Uh, there will be uh, a session uh, recording available after the fact. And just so you know, your camera and your microphone uh, are off. Um, so thank you again uh, for joining us. And I'm going to turn off my screen share and turn it over to our presenters. OK, how do we look here? Looks good. Great, awesome, all right. Okay, welcome uh, to Maritime Academies Debunked. Uh, we are just going to start with a couple brief introductions, then we're going to go into a couple topics um, about Maritime Academies in general, um, and then a couple points about each of our specific Maritime Academies um, for some sort of distinguishing factors between the three of us. Um, so I'll start. My name is Ashley Willis, and I'm the Associate Director of Freshman Admissions at Massachusetts Maritime Academy. I am Kelly Gualtieri. I'm the Director of Admissions and Enrollment Management at Maine Maritime Academy. And my name is Amira. I am an alum from SUNY Maritime College and currently an admissions counselor with the office as well. And my name is Carlos Cano, Assistant Director of Admissions for Communications at SUNY Maritime and I'm your Q&A facilitator. So if you have any questions during the course of the presentation, drop those into the Q&A and I will either ask our panel at the end of the presentation or try to answer your questions right there in the Q&A button. So let's get started. First off, we've got what is the maritime industry or what are the maritime academies important for? Basically what it does is basically fuels the maritime industry overall. So it's much more than just the deep sea merchant fleet that you see out in on commercials that are transporting cargo, and other big shipping companies. It also includes tugs and bar barges, so some of those that you see out in the harbors. Um, if you are located on the coastal waters, we've also got port and terminal operations, freight forwarding and chartering. And this also includes, includes different, um, different aspects of maritime industry like admiralty law, as well as passenger and excursion, excursion services, such as things like whale watching, or glacier, or glacier explorations, things like that, as well as Great Lakes and inland waterways shipping. We've also got shipbuilding and repair, naval architecture and marine engineering, seamen tra training, government programs and shipping, and marine insurance, communications, recreational boating, and so much more. So almost 40,000 US privately owned vessels are available for operation in the US foreign and domestic trades and over 2 billion metric tons of cargo are transported on the waterways of the United States each year. So the maritime industry contributes to the growth of the nation as well as the world. It does drive the worldwide development of modern transportation systems as well as the economic globalization. So imagine this, 90% of goods travels travel by ship at some point, and it's a major piece of the global economy. So this is why it's very important to have these maritime academies, because what's happening is that all of our graduates that come from the overall six institutions that are across the country, the three of ours that we're presenting to you today, do most of our graduates do go and serve their, or not really serve their time, we'll explain that in a bit, but they do work on ships, transporting all of these goods for the entire world. 
Great. So next we want to address some of the common myths or misconceptions that we most often hear about working in the maritime industry. Um, for a lot of students, um, you know, if you don't know someone who works in the maritime industry, it's hard to kind of get a grasp of, of what it looks like. Um, and even for students that do know something about it, um, sometimes the, the terminology can be a little bit confusing. So one of the biggest questions um, or myths that we tend to hear um, is that being a merchant mariner means that you're part of the military. Um, and this actually isn't the case. So the US Merchant Marine um, is made up of all US flag bearing ships. Um, so that can be something that transports cargo, um, but it could also be a cruise ship that bears the US flag. Um, the US Merchant Marine is not inherently part of the military, although it can be called into service in wartime. The last time that happened was World War II. So it's not exactly a common occurrence um, that those ships are being called into service, although it is a possibility. So what does that mean for students that are working on those ships? Basically, as a merchant mariner, it means that you are a private citizen, you're a civilian, you're able to choose where you wanna work, you don't get like assigned anywhere the way that you might in the military. Um, it does mean that when you're working on those ships, there could come a time or situation in which you're working on the ship and it gets called into service. Um, although I would say that's a, a not super likely scenario. Um, but the, the rest of what you're doing is really you as a civilian worker. Um, the US Coast Guard license is what our students are earning to be merchant mariners. Um, the Coast Guard distributes the license, but it doesn't mean that you're a part of the Coast Guard. Um, so something to kind of distinguish there. Um, that license does require that you be a part of a regiment of cadets, which we'll talk about at kind of each of our institutions. But what that looks like is a military style structure that exists on campuses that are providing you this bachelor's degree with a US Coast Guard license. That's how it also gets more confusing. Just because you're a part of this regimental system um, doesn't mean that you have that service obligation once you leave. So you participate in the structure on campus. For many of us, the level of structure is a little bit of a step down from what you might see in the actual military or at a federal service academy. Um, but once you graduate, you're able to go off and, and do civilian work. Um, a couple other maritime myths. Um, sometimes we hear, you know, there's no jobs left in the shipping industry because of technology. That's not the case. We are a long way off from autonomous ships. I would say, you know, what you're doing on the ship might shift, um, you know, in terms of a ship captain may be a little bit more informed on some of these pieces of technology and kind of how you're running the ship has shifted, but they still need the people to do that. Um, so there are still a lot of jobs and actually a lot of people um, in the older generation are retiring. So there's likely to be a big boom in jobs um, in the coming years. Um, Another misconception is that you have to ship out for six months at a time, meaning you have to go work on a ship for six months and then you get to be home to, for six months and you bounce back and forth with that. While it is true that there are some folks that do that, that is a possibility if you want to do that, a lot of companies have shifted their shipping schedules to reflect the fact that a lot of people want to be home sometimes. Um, so while six months on, six months off is definitely a possibility. Some people work on tugboats and come home every day. Some people go out for six weeks at a time. Some people go out for three months at a time. There's a lot of different schedules out there and you can certainly make that part of your job search if you know that you want um, something that allows you to be home more frequently. And I can go on to the next one. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about maritime life um, and it is a little bit unique. So we are three um, colleges, institutions, um, and we have a regular high school student body. A lot of us have transfers and non-traditional students and some veterans as well. Um, but we are a little bit unique from your typical state college. Um, most of us embrace a ship terminology on land we use a lot of acronyms, which yes, does apply to the military as well. Um, so we refer to certain majors, um, certain um, uniforms, things of that nature. We use a lot of acronyms. Um, for example, mass maritime, um, all the stairwells, uh, stair stairways um, are called ladder wells. Um, you know, things of that nature. You learn them pretty quickly um, and it is something that you will teach your family as well. It becomes part of everyone's language moving forward. Um, on a ship, whether it's a small ship that's near coastal or a large container ship that's going transoceanic, 
Um, we always talk about health and safety standards. There is a safety culture that's inherent in our industry, and it's everything from wearing a hard hat to actually practicing good health, health and hygiene standards. Um, so it's very relevant right now, obviously, and what is going on. Um, but that's something that is embedded in our life here. We are a community built through structure and traditions. We do have a very structured campus life. Um, you know, most of us have time periods for athletics or clubs at the, in the end of the day. Um, so we do a lot of classes during the daytime, just kind of similar to a high school schedule. Um, but we do have some really fun traditions that are embedded in our, our um, campus lifestyle as well. So things like homecoming, um, different athletic competitions, we do like to play each other and compete. Um, we also then like to go work with each other in the industry. So it is, it is a great atmosphere. Um, we have things like ring dances um, and, and um, we have a lot of alumni events as well. The world is our campus. We all have some sort of program, no matter what your major, that will send you all over to different countries um, around the world. Um, so whether it's uh, during your cruise, cadet shipping, um, again, we each call it something slightly different, um, but you will have the opportunity to actually visit multiple different places all while learning. Um, what our students are focused on is the academics and the hands-on piece. You cannot learn by, by um, an online kind of um, method. So our students are on campus, they're in labs, um, we're practicing social distance, but it is something that you actually have to learn how to turn a wrench, how to drive a vessel, things like that. Um, and it's really focused on the careers after graduation. So our students are very focused, motivated, they have a reason for being here, and we're all, we're all here to support them and get to the next step in their career path. I think I'm also up next on the next slide. <laughs> so maritime and marine related majors, as institutions, we really do have focused missions that we stick to. Um, and so all of us have these maritime and marine related fields. So if shipping isn't something that you're interested in, there's lots of shoreside aspects. Um, so we all have um, different types of business and logistics. Like Amir said, um, think about 90% of our, our products traveling by vessel in some application, right? So everyone knows we go to the Apple store for our iPhone, how did it get there? How is it there on time? So that's what our logisticians do, okay? Um, they make sure everything is at our disposal when we want it, um, and it has to be there, right, um, for the global shipping economy. We also all have some type of naval architecture, systems-based engineering. So, you know, the design side, um, working in, in shipyards, dry dock, um, systems engineering, the, the um, systems, power plants, generators. We also have some power engineering opportunities as well. Go on our individual websites, which you can see below, um, and you can actually see the differences within our academic programs. We'll also talk a little about them when we get to our separate breakout sessions. And then so we also have this ocean studies kind of side. So whether it's marine sciences, ocean some sort of environmental um, science and sustainability, our impact on the, the marine life and marine world, um, and marine bio. So again, those are things, they're related to the maritime industry, but you wouldn't necessarily be on a shipping type vessel. Okay, so another thing we wanted to address um, is sort of this idea of getting a bachelor's degree from a maritime academy versus attending a maritime training center or just starting to work in the field, which is often called working your way up the Haas pipe. Um, so why get this degree if there are other ways to go about working in the industry? So the biggest reason is that the type of license, if you're going into shipping, the type of license that you're getting by getting a bachelor's degree through one of these maritime academies is a higher level license than you're going to get through a maritime training center that might be in your local area. Um, 
usually the licenses that you may get um, at one of those training centers is for smaller ships. They may be limited to certain waterways, um, maybe limited to certain types of ships versus the license that you're getting as part of a bachelor's degree program is an unlimited license, which means you can work on any size vessel um, in the ocean, um, which basically gives you unlimited opportunity in terms of how to apply it and what types of jobs you can take on. Um, if you just started working in the field um, and wanted to work your way up that way, that is a possibility. It's just going to take you much, much longer to achieve that level of license over the course of your career. Um, so if your ultimate goal were to become a captain or chief engineer um, with an unlimited license, it's unrealistic to kind of take that path. So it's not that you can't build a career by just starting to work in the industry because you can. It's just sort of about what level you want to reach. Um, and if you're, you know, you, this is an intense way to go in terms of the intensity of the major and the um, licensing requirements and the academic requirements, but it allows you to sort of skip some steps along the way. Um, and then when you graduate and you have that license, you're able to earn higher level positions and make more money right off the bat. So that's sort of the incentive to go that route. Um, some of the maritime training centers, some of the smaller ones that you may see um, beyond just our six maritime academies, um, they often offer continuing education for people that already have some level license. So you may come to a state maritime academy and earn your bachelor's and get your third mate's license, and then you're trying to work your way up to second mate um, or chief mate, um, and you are doing some additional training and gaining your sea time. So that's sort of a, a time where those training centers may um, you may use those as well. Um, to start at a training center and then transfer to a maritime academy, um, we don't recommend it, mainly because STCW requirements are super, super difficult to transfer. Um, so sometimes if you start with one of those lower level licenses at that kind of training center and then later decide, oh, I wanna get the degree and I wanna go for this higher level license, it, you may end up starting back at the beginning. Um, so it's just important to look through all of those options and assess really what your goals are before making that decision so that you can get into the track that's really gonna lead you where you wanna be. Because uh, the last thing any of us want is for you to start down one path and then have to switch gears um, and end up a little bit behind or it just takes you longer to kind of where you want to get in the industry. Next. So aside from the different types of degrees as well as the license options for some of our students, we do obviously have some programs and activities for our students to enjoy outside of classes. So here at SUNY Maritime, we do have more than 70 clubs to join, 13 NC, uh, NCAA Division III sports to play, as well as uh, other places to study, hang out, and other spots on campus to explore. We benefit of being a Maritime Academy, especially, I would glad, glad, I should probably say this for all of our campuses, we are a waterfront campus, so that's a great opportunity for all of our students especially. So whether that's taking out a boat or a kayak or doing a paddleboard or exploring the water itself, we do utilize all of our waterfront campuses to some extent to get our students engaged in campus life. For example, at SUNY Maritime, we do have something called STEAM Day. That is a program where students in, from grades six to nine learn about the diverse, some diverse topics in science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. We did have a virtual offering this some past summer that went amazing just because they did have to switch it to a virtual platform, but then we were able to meet those accommodations for those students, as well as we do have a program that is called Marine Science Explorations that allows some really hands-on and discovery-based program for students, which basically just explores the marine environment of the East River. So again, getting that hands-on activity, not only for the local community that the campus is around, but as well as our students having that opportunity for them to get experience either teaching or interacting with other people besides their peers. Um, at Mass Maritime, we do have a variety of clubs and organizations on campus, um, as well as a very involved student government association. Um, so there are things to do beyond just the maritime. Um, um, and like Amira said, you know, being on a waterfront campus, 
even you know if you're in a short staff related program or a less you're not not in one of the shipping majors but you know you love things revolved around the maritime um there's a lot of opportunity to be involved in that just by being on a coastal campus i always like to point to fishing our students love fishing and the cape cod canal has a lot of great fishing available so that's like a very common activity for our students Something I want to highlight for high school students is in the summer, we do offer a sea science and leadership program, which is a four day, three night um, program on campus uh, where you come, you work with students who are current cadets, uh, participate in leadership activities, participate in hands on activities through some of the majors um, and things like cold water survival and firefighting, which is stuff that all of our students on campus participate in as well. So it's a good opportunity to get a taste of life at a Maritime Academy. Um, obviously this takes place at Mass Maritime Academy, so it's a peek into that, but honestly a lot of the activities are good for if you're considering any of the Maritime Academies to give you a sneak peek into what that lifestyle will look like. So at Maine Maritime Academy, um, for high school students that are interested in coming to campus, we have what's called Discovery Voyage. Um, and these are day and overnight year programs. Um, right now, we're not running them, of course, because of COVID. Um, but for students or school groups, um, we do scout groups, we do um, for guidance counselors, um, and we tailor the specific program to the group's needs. So whether you're looking at an ocean studies focus, and we take you out on our ocean studies vessel friendship and we do a drag right here. Um, again, we are all blessed with great waterfront campuses um, that allow our students to do the hands on aspect. Um, we also have um, tug and barge opportunities, things like that. We want you to see if this is the direction that you want to go. Um, we actually do look on the application to see if you've actually done these programs, whether it's at Mass or SUNY. We realize that, um, you know, we all are very similar, um, but we want to make sure that you know what you're getting into. So those are things that we actually look for on a resume. And if you've done Sea Science and Leadership, or if you've done C, um, STEAM Day at, at SUNY, um, we actually, we put it on as a few extra points on your application. Um, the thing about campus visits right now, we are actually open to students from New Jersey. Um, so you can come without a COVID test. Um, and you, we do not have the day and overnight visit op opportunities right now. We're hoping they'll return in the spring, um, but you can take in, you can come sit for an admissions counselor presentation and do a tour of campus with one of our students. And I think I'm up next again. So a little bit about our specific um, Maritime Academies and, and what makes us a little bit unique. Um, most of what you heard was what makes us similar. Um, at Maine Maritime Academy, um, if you could go to the next slide, Amira. <laughs> um, so just some of our quick facts. We were founded in 1941. Um, obviously, this is the time when we needed some extra additional um, merchant mariners to help, um, help with World War II. So as Ashley mentioned, um, back then we were, you know, asked to provide a level of shipping, moving, um, moving soldiers, um, making sure the waterways were clear, things of that nature. Um, we, are a uh, we are a public co-educational college, so we all have um, both males and females on our campus. We are a little under a thousand students. Um, our students faculty ratio is 11 to 1. We offer three degrees, so we do have a few associates degrees, um, which I'll talk to you about in a second. Most of our degrees are at, at the bachelor's level, um, so they are bachelor's of science degrees, and then we have two master's degrees as well. Um, we are all STEM-based majors, though. Um, we have NCAA Division III here with 17 varsity teams, um, everything from soccer to wrestling, swimming, basketball, um, as well as lacrosse. Um, and I know I missed volleyball and some others. I always feel bad when I miss one. Um, we have over 60 training research and pleasure vessels. So we have navigation vessels that are just for um, just for navigation classes. We have our own tug and barge here for our students to get that tug and barge certification. We have the state of Maine, which you see behind me in, in, our, um, 
in my virtual background. Um, and then we have vessels for our students to take out. So everything from those that are part of our sailing program to if you just want to come out and, and take a vessel out to go fishing. Um, it must be a common theme. We also have a lot of hunters up here. So they're just getting ready for bird season. Um, and all of them are dying for a moose permit right now. So, um, but all of this leads to 90% of our graduates being employed within 90 days of graduation here. Um, but you will find, again, because our students across all three of us are so focused on um, there are job opportunities in all the different areas, both shipping and those marine related fields. Um, there is a network of graduates that will help you not only get your first job, but continue um, as your life changes, as you move, as you know, things happen um, to get to help get you to that next step. And the next slide, which path will you chart? So for us, we have four different areas of academics. We have engineering, marine transportation, ocean studies, and international business and logistics. In our engineering program, we have three majors that actually require the regiment because they are going towards that unlimited license. Um, so as Ashley kind of mentioned, the regiment is a part of all of our campuses. For us, you do have the option of not being in the regiment if you are not a license, unlimited license major. Um, so that is an option for you. But for marine systems engineering, um, in our five-year program, um, marine engineering technology and operations, it is required. Power engineering does give you a stationary license. Um, however, you can use that um, in any state, um, not just Maine. Marine transportation are the ship drivers. Um, so marine transportation operations is that third engineer, um, again, requiring the, the regiment. And then vessel ops, small vessels, and small craft designs and small craft systems are all smaller near coastal based licenses. Our ocean studies program has marine bio, oceanography, and coastal and marine environmental science. The unique part is you can combine that with a 200 ton near coastal. That will not only let you do the research, but also drive the vessels. Um, and then international business and logistics, it's all supply chain management. Um, almost 100% job placement in that major, believe it or not, even though it's business. So companies like Tesla, Crowley, um, you know, we all have pretty impressive resumes in terms of the companies that come to us for our students. I'm going to turn it over to Ashley. Great. So, like I said, I'm from Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Um, there's a picture of our campus, which you may note looks quite similar to the overview shots of the other campuses because, you know, we all are right on the water um, and have a ship usually in view. So, um, sort of in line with those, but this is our campus. You can go ahead to the next slide. Some quick facts about us. We are located in Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts, which is right along the Cape Cod Canal, so about an hour directly south of Boston. Um, we're in a suburban area, um, but the city is accessible. So it's about an hour from Boston, about 45 minutes from Providence, Rhode Island, um, as well as some smaller city like areas are close to us. Um, it is a seasonal area. So Cape Cod is definitely a vacation day destination. So in the warmer months, it's busier, um, and then it gets quieter throughout the winter. We have about 1,700 undergraduate students total, um, and we have, do have a graduate program as well with about 100 additional students. Um, although those students are actually not on campus, um, they take classes um, at a separate location off campus. Um, similarly to Maine, we are a STEM-based education. Um, all of our academic programs, the thing that sort of ties them all together, if not the maritime, is a focus in STEM. Um, something that is unique about us is that we are actually fully regimented. Um, so all of our students, regardless of whether or not they're pursuing a U.S. Coast Guard license, do participate in the regiment on campus. Um, the reason why we've kept that in place um, is to build the strength of the regiment overall um, by having all the students participate in it. Um, it just allows us to focus on, you know, the organization and benefits for everyone uh, equally. Um, we also feel that students, even in the non-licensing programs, have a lot to gain from it. Um, 
it's designed to build leadership skills, um, time management skills, which is what all of the regiments are, are looking to build. Um, but this option is even if you're in one of those other programs um, and you like the structure um, and you know that that's going to be a good fit for you, this allows you to build those skills in this capacity, um, even if you're in that non-licensed track. Um, and we do have 15 Division III varsity athletic teams, as well as a variety of club and intramurals. Um, and then these are our academic programs. So we have seven undergraduate majors. They're all Bachelor of Science degrees. Marine Engineering and Marine Transportation are the two where you earn the U.S. Coast Guard license. Um, we also have Facilities Engineering and Energy Systems Engineering, um, which are in slightly different ways, but both of them have a big focus on sustainable energy management, um, managing multiple um, systems within a large building or facility. Um, so oftentimes students work at power plants. Um, it's basically taking a lot of what you would do in marine engineering where you're looking at the systems within a ship, but applying it on land in buildings. Um, emergency management, came to be a part of us because there is a big need for emergency managers, which is um, disaster planning and response in coastal areas, uh, but can also be applied in non-coastal areas as well. So there's a lot of opportunities within that field, whether it's law enforcement or working for an EM agency, um, lots of different ways to apply that in the maritime or not. We also have international maritime business, which our program is very similar to what Kelly described at Maine. Um, so I won't get too deep into that, but it's very similarly the, the logistics of the shipping industry. Um, and then we have marine science, safety and environmental protection. It's a very long name, but it's basically marine science mixed with environmental science. So it's just a little bit broader than like marine biology alone, um, but it is focused um, on marine science ecosystems. Um, we have a learn, do, learn philosophy, which basically means that experiential learning is going to be a really big part of any of these programs. Um, something unique to us as well, we actually run our C term, which is the um, training crews for students in licensing track and the two license track majors. We run ours in the winter um, and then have our spring semester run March to June. Um, you don't have to be in Massachusetts during that time on the ship. They typically sail down to the Caribbean, um, but from a, a year academic year perspective, that's something a little bit different about us. Um, for students in non-licensing programs, even if you're not going on C term, you still participate in other experiential learning trips that travel to international destinations um, or emergency management goes to Florida for a Habitat for Humanity project. So that hands-on learning experience you get in all seven programs, um, even if it's not necessarily on the ship. Thank you, Ashley. And now we are looking at a camp at the campus shot of SUNY Maritime College. So we are looking at the um, our small peninsula that we have and obviously our ship, the Empire State Six. We are located in the southeast section of the Bronx in a neighborhood called Bronx Neck. So over the bridge that you see over the campus, it is actually over the campus, there is a bridge there, um, and that is the Throgsnack Bridge. So you would notice that bridge whenever you would cross over into Long Island from the Bronx. And it's a great shot of the campus because it shows um, a great waterfront um, atmosphere that we have here. So again, just roughly going over some quick facts or maritime by the numbers, we do have 1,800 students. 200 of those are graduate students and the rest are either regiment or civilian students. So again, to reiterate, those regimental students are those that are getting that Coast Guard license and that we do have about 70% of our student population that participate in that regiment of cadets. On the flip side, we do have 30% of students who are civilian students and they're just getting their regular college, tradi uh, their traditional college experience. So they're the ones that are just getting their degree. We do have a 15 to 1 student to teacher ratio, and I'd like to also mention that we only we do not have any student um, student teacher assistants, as well as we only have one lecture hall that does not get filled at all, mainly only the only reason that it gets filled is for a meteorology class or there's a regimental activity that has to happen in that lecture hall. But other than that, the benefit of having such a small campus and I could 
pretty sure like, all the other academies can vouch for this, is that we do get that great experience between the teachers as well as the students as well. Our average class size is about a tw is 21. We do have 13 nationally recognized programs with an engineering, science, and business and humanities. We do have five ABET accredited engineering programs. We have over 80 student clubs and organizations and 13 NCAA Division III varsity sports, some of which include men's basketball, women's volleyball, men's and women's soccer, men's and women's lacrosse, and uh, swimming and diving and other sports as well. Just a quick mention as well, I was a student athlete at SUNY Maritime and the best thing that I think the entire, all of the campuses did together is that we do have something, especially I, in volleyball, because that's what I can vouch for, we do have something called the Maritime Classic. So that's when all the uh, Maritime schools get together on the East Coast and we do play against each other. And what was really cool is that I actually met someone from Maine Maritime that actually graduated recently that was playing volleyball and I saw her on a ship. We were working on a ship together, just hanging out. So it was really cool. And it does speak for the fact that we do not only work together on campus, we play together at sports, but we do work together once we graduate, which is awesome to know and experience just because I actually knew someone. <laughs> Our academic, undergraduate academic programs, like I said, we do have 13 of those. We do have a Bachelor of Engineering programs, which include electrical facilities, marine, mechanical, and naval architecture. Well, some of those degrees do require a, um, the only major that does require a license is marine engineering. The others in the Bachelor of Engineering degrees do have the option of either being an intern student or a regimental student. The Bachelor of Science programs, we do have International Transportation and Trade, Marine Environmental Science, Marine Operations, Marine Transportation, as well as Maritime Studies. In the Bachelor of Science degrees, none of these programs require you to be in the regiment, but you do have the option to either be a civilian student or that intern student, as well as, um, or be that regimental student. In our Associates of Applied Science, our students are, do that as an Associates program, this is our, uh, our limited option. So all of our bachelor's programs are unlimited licenses. So you're able to sail on those big cargo ships, but with the associate's degree, it is limited tonnage, which means that you're only able to sail on ship, ships such as tugs and barges. And another thing to note, we do have the Regiment of Cadets and some of their requirements for our hands-on experience that is required for our students prior to their graduation is that they need to complete three C terms. So that occurs typically over the summer. We do have 75 day cruises that starts after their freshman year. So that summer after freshman, summer after sophomore, and then that summer after their junior year. And that, so and that summer uh, after their sophomore year, our students do have that option of cadet shipping, which allows them to sail with an outside company, so or not with us. So they do have that option there to gain that outside experience. In addition, our civilian students do have a similar requirement prior to graduation. We do require our intern students or civilian students to create to uh, um, complete an internship. So that internship, some majors may require two, some may require one. A lot of students do take more than usual just because they do want to get that hands-on experience prior to entering that workforce. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is our contact information. Definitely if you have additional questions, um, feel free to reach out to any of us individually. Um, I know we all have um, a lot of options during COVID in terms of visit or getting more information, um, whether that's virtual visit or in-person opportunities. Um, and the on the main websites, um, the, you can find more information for the contact, contact information for um, our offices. All right, well, Amira, Ashley, and, and Kelly, thank you so much for, uh, you know, spending time this afternoon to uh, you know, present uh, about your respective institutions. Uh, I, I do want to uh, just uh, thank again our, our single participant that we had with us uh, this afternoon, Shannon O'Neill, uh, but it, there will be a uh, 
recording available um, for folks. Uh, does everybody see my, my, my screen right now? Uh, the NJACAC slide, just give me a, a, a thumbs up just so I know I wanna make sure that uh, there will be a quick survey that'll come up afterwards. And uh, you know, certainly there's some more programming you know, as part of this virtual fair. So uh, we strongly encourage you to take advantage of the offerings. And before we head off, are there any questions that might have popped up in chat by any chance? Not at all, ladies. Uh, no questions that did come up. Ran a very tight ship, no pun intended. <laughs> Ending right on time and certainly conveying all the information. Um, I do just want to point out, um, and a lot of us do have options for virtual visits as well. Um, here at SUNY Maritime, we do have virtual information sessions on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. as well as 11 o'clock in the morning on Thursdays, as well as virtual tours that are happening. You can find out more about those information sessions as well as the virtual tours on our website under the Visit Us tab on the Admissions tab. And again, if you guys have any other options as well, um, during this time, feel free to um, share that as well. I kind of mentioned a little bit about our, our campus visits and stuff, but um, we have a program on Tuesday nights at seven. Um, anyone in our system will get the links to those live events. They're everything from department days to ch live chats with students, um, Tuesdays at seven. And then we have our um, virtual opportunities as well to Zoom with any student who has questions or come to campus. It's not a bad drive from New Jersey. Amira, do you wanna talk, uh, since we do have two minutes, do you wanna talk about um, balancing athletics with um, a maritime degree? Um, a lot of our students here, about 60% do play um, athletics, and then they're also participate in clubs and, and um, organizations. I know most of us are, are the same in terms of our student body makeup being very athletic. Um, can you talk about how you handled that? Yeah, so very briefly, um, which is also a, a little tidbit that I left out. I was also a civilian student. I was a commuter student. Um, I was a student athlete. <laughs> so I did a lot of things on campus just to keep myself busy because I do like that atmosphere of just dedication and focusing on um, your academics. But just doing athletics as well as just having the academic workload just flowed hand in hand, just because I didn't have that downtime to quote unquote get lazy. I was more of that student that did want to be active in my school community as well as outside. And what also really helped as well is that a lot of these games for volleyball did end a little bit later, so it helped me beat traffic. So I did enjoy that as well. And again, the lifelong friendships so that just happens in between all of our campuses, like just interacting with one another, that was my probably favorite part and continues to be my favorite part because I'm meeting all of these great counselors from all these different institutions. So I thank you again for so much for just having us today or, and just meeting together and just doing this. All right, well, thank you everyone. And I uh, hope everybody enjoys the rest of your day. Stay safe and healthy. Thanks so much. Thank you.